Hey, today I'm here with Steve from Tronix Fix and we're going to talk about repair. Steve has a YouTube channel with over a million subscribers. Let's get to know him and hear about what he has to say. So Steve, uh, you have over a million subscribers on your YouTube channel. So tell us about your YouTube channel, what it's all about, and uh, we'll start there. Yeah, so I have a channel that where I take uh, broken items and then just try and fix them on camera. I try to tell the story of the broken item. and. Um, I basically started this channel, I used to have a repair business, and I decided to make a couple YouTube videos and put them up on YouTube and see how they did. They ended up doing well, so I just kept going, and now I don't have a repair business and I just do YouTube full time. Uh, that's really awesome. That's, that's great. So how did you get into this, like repairing stuff? Did you go to school for it? You know, tell us a little bit about that. So I grew up on a, on a ranch out in the middle of nowhere. So when I was younger, if there was something that broke, then we just had to fix it. We didn't have the option of buy, just going and buying a new one or waiting for a repair person. We just had to do our best to try and get it fixed. So that's where it originally started. And then I've just kind of always been a fixer since then. I do have a degree in automotive technology, a two year degree, and I was a me mechanic for a while and then I just got into uh, fixing electronics and just kind of uh, been there for, I've been fixing electronics mainly for uh, about uh, seven years now. Wow, so how, how come you don't fix cars on your channel? I would love to fix cars on my channel. Um, two reasons, one of them is that I'm not 100% sure my audience would watch. Uh, the other reason though is I really don't have a good place to, to do it. So if I ever get a shop built, then maybe I will try oh, that. Man, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so when we're talking about repair, uh, if I'm sure you were like this and I was like this and I still am, you think about uh, this, these things that you want to fix and you run up against these barriers, right? Mm -hmm. Fear. You run into, I don't have the right tools, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. So maybe you could speak to that. How do you, how did you like, overcome your fears and, and maybe speak about the tools thing. It can be very intimidating when you have something that's broken, especially if it's something expensive, you know, maybe your computer or something and you use it for work and you have to have it. That can be extremely intimidating, especially if you don't have, if you don't necessarily have the money to just go and buy a new one or something like that. And so uh, depending on what the device is, what I tell people is it's already broken. So, you know, generally speaking it's not going to hurt if you try and fix it now there are some things where you don't want to just dig in and, and try and fix it but for the most part you know it's already broken you might as well give it a try um, as far as tools i mean i think everybody should have a basic tool set you don't need anything too fancy usually and so i always try to just have um even from even when i was younger i would, I would try and have just a basic tool set and like what, what is that basic what does that basic tool set look like yeah you know, like a hammer should yeah. Really have a hammer? So, I mean, it depends what you're trying to work on, you okay. know, but for me, electronics, I, I have a, uh, multiple precision tool sets. Um, I fix it makes great ones. They're a little more on the expensive side, but they're really good ones. You can go on Amazon and buy a $15 cheap toolkit that will get the job done, you know, for a couple fixes. A lot of times those types of tools, you know, wear out faster but that'll totally work so yeah probably um, a lot of people have the hammers and the phillips head screwdrivers and that kind of stuff but what you're talking about is something that has smaller bits because yeah. you know we all have devices and electronics or or glasses or something where having those small bit sets is really handy to have and uh probably one of them i would say maybe you would disagree or agree but one of the things is once you get past the fear, you have to kind of get to the problem. And most of our devices have screws in them. Mm -hmm. And when you have those sets, you can, you can open it up and look at it and kind of see, all right, is there any damage here? Or if it was like liquid in there, you can like get it out or dry it out. Or it just gives you more options when you have, you know, one of these simple tool sets handy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you, if you have the tools you need, you can at least try. You know, it doesn't mean you have to you have to get in and try doing board repair on your first attempt, but you can just do a basic basic inspection and see if there's anything easy you can fix. Uh, the other thing I would say is with the resources we have online now between places like iFixit and YouTube, I mean, those two just those two websites right there, you could fix probably most anything or at least 
be able to open up almost anything to look inside and just have a basic inspection yourself. Yeah, how much do you use YouTube to figure out your, the things that you fix? Yeah, so if it's something, especially something I'm not familiar with fixing, that's basically the first website I open up is YouTube. And almost always there's a number of videos with people that have the exact same problem. So it's super handy and super easy just to see what other people have tried to do already. It's such a great resource. Yeah. You know, I know he, he and I, we both make YouTube videos to help people. And, but we're also huge consumers and, oh, yeah. and learners of yeah. this content out there. So if you make YouTube videos, thank you. <laughs> so uh, so one, one of the hopes for my channel is that I want people to be inspired to tackle their fears uh, and overcome them and, and get a project done, whether that's fixing something or a project around the house or something like that. So tell us a little bit about, about like the vision for your channel and, and maybe like what encourages you when you hear from your audience? Yeah, I, I love hearing stories of people trying to fix things, whether they're successful or not. I mean, success, those successful ones are great, but just the fact that you're trying is amazing. Probably my fur, my uh, probably my favorite email that I've gotten was from a guy who he started his own YouTube channel about trying to fix stuff, and because he had seen some of my videos and thought it was cool and he wanted to try it, so he started his own YouTube channel. Um, in my opinion, he's been successful. But then above and beyond that, he actually got a job working for a repair center in his town based on his YouTube channel. And so those types of emails and stories are my favorite because I, I love knowing that the work I'm putting out there is inspiring other people to at least try. And, you know, some people go on and make it a career, which is amazing. Wow, that's really amazing. That's a great yeah. story. And, um, and, and also with, um, you know, what, what are you hoping that people will like skill wise, maybe walk away from your channel. I would love to see people learn more about repair. Everybody kind of starts, everybody's at a different place, but if you, if people will at least try more and uh, maybe do something a little out of their comfort zone because you know, they saw it on my channel, um, I, I would love to see that. Yeah. Yeah, so you probably, like the rest of us, you have something in your house. You have something on your to-do list that's like, you know, in the back of your mind, like, oh, yeah, I know I need to take care of that. I know I need to fix that. And so uh, from both of us, we're trying to encourage you, yeah, try it out. Give it a shot. You know, it's already broken, as Steve said. And so maybe you can fix it. And maybe you can even save uh, a bunch of money by doing it yourself. And maybe even use that money that you would save and buy a nice set of tools. And so, yeah, yeah that's kind of how I think about it. And uh, you know, what's the worst that could happen? Maybe you're out a few bucks, but at least you tried and then you're overcoming your fears. So uh, let's see, would you say, uh, do you wanna say anything else to those thinking about maybe getting into fixing things or learning about repair? I guess kind of what I've already said, just try. See, you know, there's such satisfaction from taking something that's broken and then fixing it yourself with your own hands. Um, I, I can't describe the feeling, so I just I just want people to try. You know, it's it's not for everybody. Not everybody's really great with their hands. Right. That's fine. Right. You know, but yep. I think everybody can fix something. So I just think, you know, you should just try. So we're gonna end with a lightning round. Everything you want to know about Steve. Are you ready for this? Yeah, you got to answer up. right away. Right, okay, no no thinking here. Right. Gut level responses. All right. <laughs> Favorite food? Uh, lasagna. Top hobby? Um, business. Business. <laughs> That's not a hobby. All right, Fine, hiking, try again. Hiking. hiking. Okay, that's a hobby. Okay, all right. Uh, favorite vacation spot? Um, I don't really go on vacations. So. Where, do you, where do you go hiking? Uh, in the mountains. Okay, all right, mountains. All right, vanilla or chocolate? Depends on what it is, usually chocolate. Ice, ice cream? Uh, chocolate. Okay, all right. Best multimeter setting? Uh, ohms. Ohms. Oh, oh I, I was going to say continuity anyway. Favorite place to get broken stuff? Um, online liquidation. Ooh, nice. Uh, let's see. After, this is yes or no question. After something gets fixed, should it stay fixed? Should it stay fixed? Yes. Yeah, it's like, kind of like Incredibles. Like, I fixed, <laughs> I saved the world. It should stay saved. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, and then finally, how much is the perfect amount of thermal paste? Uh, if I told you that, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> Man, I was hoping I'd be able to find out the secret. That is something on Steve's channel. So I got two things for you here at the end. One, check out Steve's channel. And secondly, if you like repair, check out this video over here.